Good morning. This is Cynthia with Believer's House, and this is Morning Devotions, and we are on day 14. We are in our Bible study devotional book titled Awaken. Again, we're on day 14, and today our topic is Ego Monster. What an interesting, let me put my coffee aside, what an interesting topic. And in this morning, as I looked at our, our devotional, read through it and thought about it and began, you know, wondering, Lord, what, how does this apply? What is this? What can I share this morning? What is it that you're speaking to me and to those who watch? And so as I began to think about it, and I and I um, love uh, the, the author's style of this devotional book, and um, I read through and I, I, I was really quickened. I was really maybe even convicted in certain areas because this really reaches out to the motives of why we do things. Specifically for myself as a minister, you know, I could say that it appears that what I'm doing is is I'm doing it for God and it should be equated to me, you know, in my tab of righteousness. Um, however, it's important that we look back and we look into ourselves and we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal inside of us what our motive are, is for whatever we do, including ministry. And so today, as I wanted to, to expound on that a little bit, I did a little bit of research and I come to the conclusion that Another, there's a couple other words that we could re replace the word ego with. It could be self. Uh, it could also be flesh. And so if we look at it that way, our ego is really our sense of self. It's the sum of all things that we use to define who we are. And it, we have our own perceptions and our own desires. And if I want to really know what the essence of my ego is, I could ask the question, who am I and what do I want? So in our journey with the Lord, uh, answers to these kinds of questions will change as we grow older, as we mature, uh, we find that those kinds of questions are kind of defined by our experiences and also the trajectory in which we have sent ourselves. Also, as we pursue the Lord, those change. Someone wants in the room, so I'm going to go ahead and um, let them in. And so as we're thinking about that today, we're thinking about um, our ego, our self, our um, flesh. We can think about um, our ego in that way. We can, inter as I've said, we can interchange those three words for the word ego. So as our journey with the Lord continues, the scripture tells us that he must increase and we must de decrease, which makes it sound like God is not in favor of who we are at all. But that's not exactly what this is saying. There's scripture throughout all the Bible that says, you know, that what may suggest if we look at it just in, in what we see, that God himself is not, we might conclude that he's not happy with who we are and that, um, the, people may have suggested that there's good and evil, you know, and that um, we're filled with evil. And we know that uh, history shows that a lot of the monks believed that, that any part of life was really very evil. And because Jesus said himself in Luke chapter nine, we must deny ourselves. Um, we also saw that Paul, the great apostle Paul, who wrote much of our new testament said that we need to be crucified and that talks about talks about that death talks about and so um i can see i'm getting a feedback here and i'm wondering are you able to hear that feedback anna or is it just me can you hear me um, um it's cutting off Okay, I'm having problems. I had to try three different computers and do all kinds of stuff this morning. It's not wanting to record. Can you hear now? Yes. I have no idea what's happening. It's just um, something to do with my internet today. So I probably will have to record this later for for the web recording um, because I have a trouble with my internet. And that's one of the reasons why I like to be a week or two ahead because I don't want to get stuck of trying to record something when it, you know, I'm having these problems. I actually um, had to change um, computers twice, change the background of my my video because it wasn't it was coming up I, I all you could see was my head and so I just really had a bunch of struggles this morning 
And it's interesting that this morning is about ego and it's about self. Cause I was like, well, this certainly isn't promoting any kind of ego. <laughs> so what did you see when you read the, the uh, devotional this morning? Did you see anything that stuck out to you? Hmm. No, actually, um, I, 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 I got what she said and, uh, and, and that has happened to me. Mm -hmm. So, but I have learned, you know, that not everything, you know, God works for his, his own purpose. Yeah. And, and I and, think for me, I have to be careful because I have a lot of strength on my own in my own personal resolve. And some of that is there because of the giftings that God puts in me, because yeah, I have some uh, strong leadership giftings. I also have a teacher gifting. I'm also from the North. There's quite a few things in my life that make a mix of constitute who I am, but I would like to think, and I always have to check myself that God is the center of all of those things. I think when the problem comes in is when we become self-indulgent or we become self-dependent rather than God dependent. And when we rely on what we can do rather than relying on what God says. Um, and I think the fall from the moment we're born, we're all about satisfying self and um, you know, feed me, feed me, which is righteous, rightly so, because we're babies and we have that dependence and we learn a lot of things from our parents. But we grow up through the world trying to take care of ourselves and trying to work things so they work out for our good. And so when we get saved, we hear the message that we need to die to who we are and we need to live for Christ. And sometimes that can be confusing, I think. And so for me, I know I struggle at times. Is this you, Lord, or is this me? Because there's this great struggle that says, um, do everything that you can do. Work as hard as you can. One of the quotes that I they talked a lot about in ministry school is work like it's all up to you, but pray like it's all up to God. And so sometimes for me, um, I have to be careful that I don't do the work like it's all up to me. And um, I don't pray like it's all up to God. And I think there's a balance. And if you're going to do a balance of one or the other, it, I think it's more important to pray like it's all up to God than it is to work like it's all up to us. Because in my personality type, um, I can do, I'm a workhorse, always have been. Um, I very rarely take a whole day where I don't do anything other than something to just rest and relax. Even when we're on vacation, I'm, I'm posting and I'm looking and I'm, you know, and, and, and to just sit before the Lord and just, just soak. It's been a long time for me to just, just done that, just did that, done that, whatever. And so I think this morning for me, it was really a wake up call that this has not become a task for me. Then uh, a celebration of my relationship with God. Does that make sense? So I think that's where, for me, where I was challenged this morning is to remember that my relationship with God is about my relationship with God. It isn't coming to God to find out what he wants me to do, which we always fight, or I always fight. I'm always interested in what shall I do. And I think most of us as humans are interested in what shall we do instead of what shall I be with him. Uh, I loved her quote here. The approval of, of others is never suitable, is never a suitable replacement for fathers. You know, that gets into people pleasing. Um, and, and I think I think that fits right there. And then she also says that it applause is not the grand prize waiting at the end of life's many endeavors. Right. We have to remember that applause is, is very fleeting and it, it always feels nice to get life you know applause for a life but the lord also says in scripture that when we receive a reward here we've received our reward and that we need to be we need to be storing up um treasures in heaven so um even though i've had trouble getting in this morning and getting my computer to work as is um i think uh my issue i i I shouldn't say, I think my issue, I think what my challenge is today is to really ask the Lord a, um, a deeper. I think I've been convicted in some somewhat 
um, to again, which is something I do often is check my motives. What is your motive for this? You know, Lord, show me what the motive is, because um, we can look on the outside and look at fruit and we can say, well, this person is this or this person is that. Of course, God sees on the inside. And so sometimes we even withhold our own, our own motives are sometimes withheld from ourselves and we think mm -hmm. that we're doing things to please God but we're really doing things to please ourselves or make that's trying to make thing, manipulate it that's one thing this devotion did to me it, it kind of made me look at myself a lot yeah and you know and and and, and I'm not you know and it, it made me uh put, put that devotion and perspective in my life because mm -hmm. that way I can see you know my my mistakes my own mistakes right and uh be able to do better no right. do what he wants me to do not what I want to do right but I think also sometimes we can go the opposite way where we're into self um um, you know, we deflate ourselves that we don't have any value. And that's not, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's not God's way. He does it totally opposite of what we would think. We have to empty ourselves of ourselves, of our own independence. That's what I think it's after is, is killing our, our independence and making ourselves God dependent and him being the leader. And then through that, God actually, it's like this, um, it's like when the Trinity, you know, God, the father, he points out the son and the son points out the father and the Holy Spirit points out Jesus. You know what I mean? It's like this big circle and they all are honoring one another. And so as we honor God, he honors us back. But as we honor him back, he honors us back. So it's more like that. And as we give it back to him, we say, yeah, but all I do is for you. And he's like, yeah, but I love you so much and you're so wonderful and, and you know you're doing these things for me and I'm like yeah but the only reason I can do these things is because you've given me these gift and God how would you would like me to express who you are to other people you know what I mean there's that but yeah. sometimes we get off on yeah I am pretty good I did pretty good I'm pretty happy with how that turned out right yeah and, uh, I think that I don't think that itself is a bad thing it, but it's a slippery road that it can right. take right and then right. also when it doesn't work out the way we think you know, many, many years ago, uh, this is prior to 2010, probably for 2004, 2005, somewhere in there. Dean and I started a television show, uh, specifically I did. It was a talk show and it was called Real Life. And I, we ran that television show for one season and I could never quite get, you know, I didn't stick with it and I never could quite get it. And I thought, man, that I heard God wrong and I failed. But I don't, you know, I talked to, I don't know if you know who Barbara Stevens or Mama Hugs is. I talked I to know her. Mama Hugs. Yeah. And she said, you know, there's been times in my life when I've done the same thing. And I thought I missed God. And she said, but God looks at things differently than we do. We joined God and what he told us to do, whether it works or whether it doesn't, isn't the point. The point is we are obedient. It was obedience. That is the test. Are we going to be obedient? And the success of us doing what he tells us is no longer, it's no longer about the success. It's about us being obedient. So that helped me. Um, but we have to be careful, you know, that we don't get it caught up and we don't measure things the way the world does, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. This was a deep thinker for me today. Yeah. And I, I think this is another one that it'll, that it's a good thing I do it in the morning because I'll need all day to chew on it, you know? <laughs> It's true. Yeah. It's true. So um, it's one thing I like about her devotionals is they're not just what does this say, which I think is good. I think we need to know what the word of God says. I think you know that, that that's important to me. But I think there's also important parts to look at things, to do some some retrospection, you know? Yeah. And so you look at yourself and look back and mm -hmm. see where, where that fit in those those the, in the life that you live live yep. and living yep yeah for sure so um i um interchange when i think about this though i interchange flesh 
because really ego is about flesh and ego is about self, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we look through the scripture and we see things about self and we see things about flesh, those are the things that challenge who we are and how we determine, you know, our value and so on and so forth. And ego, I think also has something to do, not completely at first, I thought, you know, ego, pride, okay, I can, you know, I, I'll think about that. Yeah. Um, and I think ego can be about pride, but it isn't always about pride. You know, it's more, it's all about self, which selfish can be about pride too. One of the illustrations that Dean and I use when we teach about pride is we have a, uh, a um, Burger King crown that we painted gold. And then we found another one that's just a you know, it's a child's, but it fits. It's a bigger size. It's got, it might, must be for Halloween. It's got little fake jewels all over it. <laughs> and we talk about pri pride being a crown that we wear because the Bible talks about, refers to it as a crown. And then we have this helmet and we talk about the helmet of salvation. And we put this crown on us. It's really hard to put this salvation on over top of a crown. We have to remove the crown to put our salvation on. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, you know, that's, that's a fun illustration and it gives us a good picture, but this goes beyond the illustration of the picture right to the heart. You know, yeah. this is like checking the heart. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So apparently my sound has, has, has fixed itself out. Is that right? Yeah. I can hear you better now. Yeah. I have no I mean, idea what that's cut. about. It's just all of a sudden, no matter what I was doing, it just wasn't working this morning. You can tell I have a green screen when parts of my picture don't show up, you know, cool. it, that, it's where it's in this cup where it's green. <laughs> I have to remember not to wear green when I'm using a green screen, because all you'll see is my head. My head will be floating. <laughs> <laughs> I love this kitchen. I need to show it to Dean and say, see this, this is I what I'm going to say. <laughs> what, where, where are you in that beautiful kitchen? <laughs> yeah. We'll just pretend that I'm remodeling and this is what I got, right? This is a face statement. <laughs> yeah, it would work. Cool. I mean, yeah, it'll work. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I really, I don't have anything else other than that. Um, you know, I would have went, went into much more of a teaching mode had I been been um, re recording. But like I said, when I started hearing my voice come back, I thought, uh oh, something's wrong. And I don't want to go through this whole thing, thinking that mm -hmm. people can hear me and are having them hear that echo without checking. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll just keep going. And uh, we'll see how this goes. I will tell you that I got a hold of Gary Porter. He's the pastor at Encounter Church over on Nine Mile. He's a, he's a good friend of ours. And he has these little business cards that he has printed and it says on the front it says I love my church and then on the back side it has the name the address the phone number and the website and then it has uh it's kind of like the the business card is split in half and one side is the logo and the address and you know website and blah blah and then over here he has our the, the t dates and times of services and I thought, you know, those might be something that would be nice for me to have made up and then I could give them to you guys because it's a lot easier when people say, where do you go to your, where do you go to church? You can yeah. just hand, hand them that. And I don't know whether people ask you that anymore, but it's always nice to have two. Or, I always have a business card in my purse, which for this way, you know, then I can exchange them for this and um, or even give you some of our business cards, you know, that tell about um, so that you can say this is where it doesn't have our name on it. It just says believers. Oh, it does on the back. But we can have some made that just says I love my church and we can hand those out instead. Yeah. I think that would be a good idea. So, um, yeah, I'm really praying this week that the Lord would, uh, you know, that it doesn't enter into ego, but it enters into and I think it's important that we do pray because the Bible says that his house will be called a house of prayer. And if we say we want the ministry built on prayer, but we don't pray together, are we just giving lip service to something? Yeah. And yeah. so um, that's one of the things I think it's important. Plus, you know, we have some dates that we can't rent the pay, the community center because it's rented so i thought i said immediately when i started looking over to see if we could do it out there i thought well that's great we'll just try to schedule some evangelistic events and then my evangelist is sick so i thought well better yet for me we need to really start with prayer anyway mm -hmm. so 
I want to run this by you, Anna, and see what you think. I was um, in a, a meeting yesterday, and one of the things that uh, a gentleman challenged me a little bit in a way is, and, and I, I thought, oh my gosh, this is what I teach. Why have I not? Sometimes you need somebody else to poke, poke you, to help you move your vision from what you see to see something else, right? Remember how we've talked about how we can look, but we can't see. Sometimes we look and we're seeing what we think we're looking, but we're missing the outer picture. And one of the things that he said, and I've said this before, so what I couldn't believe it kicked myself because I thought, oh my gosh, that's bigger than what I thought. He said, why is it that we are attempting to get people to come to us, to our services? Because we make it all about us. We want them to come to our church. We want them to come in and join us we want to assimilate them into our group it's all about us and ministry is all about others diluja diluja anna or did you just go off camera i'm sorry that's okay something came uh, the it's okay did you hear what i had oh to say God, you call me <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's what happened this morning, right? So oh. did you hear what I was saying about the meeting I was in? Or let me start. Okay, let me start over again. It's okay. So I was in a meeting yesterday and I was challenged very much. So you know how we, we talked about a couple of weeks ago about looking but not seeing? Mm -hmm. And we look like when we drive, we get somewhere and we can't remember getting there. And you think, oh my gosh, I don't even remember seeing anything. But it's on automatic. You know, we just do so many things on automatic. And um, one of the things that they talked about and I was challenged with is that we are striving, we as the church on whole, mm -hmm. is striving to get people to come to our church. We are trying to get them to come to our church, to join us in what we're doing, to simulate into our group. That becomes yeah. all about us. Yeah. And ministry is about service. It's about serving other people what they need, not about mm -hmm. us. And so the focus needs to change. And so I was like, oh my gosh, so true. And then they said, they talked about, you know, we need to stop trying to get them to go to, to come to us and we need and to go, us to, go them. to them. Exactly. You got it. Exactly. And as, as soon as he started talking about, we're trying to get them to come to us. I was like, yep, yep, yep. So we need to go out to get them. But then my next question was, well, how do we do that? Because like I've said, all of my friends are Christians. I don't know anybody who's not a Christian. Mm -hmm. And um, so they began talking about going out to the coffee shops. And I thought, oh, I never thought of that. I can do that. You know, yeah. I've went, I've been to Panera before and I always thought about, I have this little, I'm trying to think if I, I have it close. I don't, but you know how those plastic um, frames that you can get at the dollar store, but they're just like little plexiglass and they're, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're bent like this and this, and you just slip the picture up and then it sits here and this holds it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just slides in there. Like you can get all the different sizes. And I have these ones that are five by seven. And I told Deb, this is a long time ago, that I was going to make up, and I hadn't done it, take a, a piece of paper that's the size of that five by seven and print up our logo, you know, and put Believer's House and um, and maybe put something like, ask me for prayer, or do something like that. And when yeah. I go to Panera Bread, sit it on the side of my table, um, something of that nature. I actually had Dana make me up some polos that says it's got our logo right here. And on the back, it says, ask me for prayer. That's and when it cool. cools down, I'm going to start wearing those to the grocery store. You know what I mean? Some of those. Yeah. Kinds of now that, that they would still have too. to approach me, but I think it's still putting things out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can wear them too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and I thought if I got, you know, and then I thought these, these uh, polos are too hot for me right now because they're tight. You know, teachers, you know, loose. Hobby and I thought Lobby. I could get some different ones. I'm sorry, what are you saying? The Hobby Lobby sell, sell t-shirts for $2 and something. Right. Yep. Just simple t-shirts and we can wear those with yep. those logos. And Dana, Dana has the, the machine to make them. Oh, cool. Yeah. She just needs us to buy the vinyl. You know what I mean? The, yeah. The, 
stuff that you put on. And I did, I had her do quite a few for me. I had a bunch of uh, polos because when I worked as an insurance adjuster, that was one of the shirts that I was required to wear. Mm -hmm. And so I just had her put my, our logo on it, you know? And so, oh, cool. yeah, I think doing some things like that, but also going out to the coffee shops, you know, and just having a coffee and uh, meeting people, talking to people next to us and that sort of thing. So I'm just really praying about that because you, you know, you were on the, the call yesterday in the morning and I told you about the two scriptures that the Lord gave me. Mm -hmm. um, um, one, I think it was in second Corinthians and uh, yeah, second Corinthians nine and some, and another one. Um, but as I be uh, about surrendering, right. And, and being weak and acknowledging my weakness, that this is not an area in which I know what to do. You're going to have to give me, uh, steps to do what, what you would call, what you would have us to do because you called okay. us to go. Everybody is called to go. Right. Mm -hmm. And so where do you want us to go? How do, how do we go? We're, we're moving. We're, we're, we're in. And so it was interesting that this, this meeting I've had scheduled for probably three weeks that I, I jumped on it at, I think it was at two o'clock today, yesterday. And that was the message. I was like, Oh my gosh, that's, you know, that was, that was really cool. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking about that and praying about that, but I do believe that we're on the right track about going out and doing some things which I've always wanted to do, but I, you know what I mean? I just haven't, we just, you know, there's just always just so much that needs to be done. So anyway, and the, the, the goal of all of that is to make sure it's about him leading us and us um, not being independent, but God dependent upon how we do what we do. Yeah. So, you know, going out and having coffee, going out to fast foods, going, you know, all the different places, just get out into the community. And because I'm such a homebody, that's hard for me because I just as soon not go anywhere. Um, but um, I can, I don't mind going up. I, I will take a book or I'll take my laptop or I'll take uh, my Bible. Probably I'll take my Bible because my tendency, people won't interrupt you if you're in, if, if you look like you're working. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you have your, your um, laptop, you're too, I think you're in too much focus. And so um, just have some things up there, maybe even just my journal so I can write and stop and look around and make eye contact with people because people won't interrupt you if you don't have eye contact. Right. right? And me make eye contact and me go interrupt people, you know, and uh, just not hand up cards because I don't want to get kicked out of Panera, but just say, hey, I'm Cynthia. You know, I come up here, you know, whatever times, two times a week or whatever, however many times I've decided I'm going to do that. And, I, uh, you know, I'd love to have you, you know, come up and join me and, and talk about whatever. Just be friends. Right. With me, you That'd know, that'd be cool. So that's the, that's kinds of things that I'm really thinking about and praying about. So think about it and pray about it with me so that we can, that God will give us our own ideas. One of the other things he said, there was people on this meeting and the, the guy was nasty in the comments. He said, this is supposed to be about this and we're 20 minutes in and you're not telling me what to do. And I looked over and I thought, I read that and I thought, you're missing the whole point. Because at the very beginning, he said, if you're looking for a recipe, do this, do this, do this. And this is what you'll get. He said, you're in the wrong meeting. He said, mm -hmm. I can give you some ingredients, but every ingredient is different for every church because mm -hmm. every city is different and every people is different. So I'm not mm -hmm. going to tell you what to do. I'm going to give you ideas. And, and I thought, buddy, you just need to jump off. <laughs> attitude, attitude. But I was like, I didn't say, you know what I mean? I didn't answer him. It's not, it wasn't my meeting. I was just listening. But I thought, oh my gosh, how... He was so into his, and I, and I thought it was such a great, great picture of where we are. Well, just tell me what to do. I'm going to send out yeah. these first cards. I'm going to knock on these many doors, and then we're going to have this many people. You know, I don't think that's true. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, um, that's my thoughts today. And then later on today, I'm going to, when I have a better internet connection, I'll go back in and record today's, but. I think the value of us getting on here and doing these is we get to discuss lots of things, not just, but it also, it's a springboard for other thoughts. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I may, I may keep this video, the zoom video more 
for that type of thing than actually going, you know, doing the, the other thing. So it, it, it changes, you know, you have to be fluid. You can't get stuck in, well, this is how I do it. Cause that's what yeah. religion does, right? Religion is worried about, well, we do it this way. So anyway, I'm challenged and I'm a little bit frightened because, um, um, this is a out of my comfort zone. Right? That's what God wants you to do, to be yeah. out of our comfort out zone. Out of our comfort zone. Yep. And I knew when I began Believer's House, if we go to the website on Believer's House, one of the things in the mission, uh, our goal is to make ourselves uncomfortable by reaching out into the community. Because I know mm -hmm. I have it written down. I know that's what the Lord told me to do. So sometimes we have to be reminded, you know, have to put yeah. that stuff ever before what? us. That's that's out of my comfort zone too because that's one thing that I struggle with being being bold, being going out there, mm -hmm. and and I need to break that mm -hmm. chain. Right, and I and I think you know there's a difference between you know somebody that I would be able to relate to or somebody who that would be able to relate to me is going to be totally different than the person that you would relate to. Mm -hmm. I sometimes come on a little strong and sometimes I scare people because I can be a little intense, you know? Um, maybe they want to watch me from afar, but they're not really sure they want me to get me in their lives because I may challenge them because mm -hmm. I do challenge people, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And I tend to, tend to be pretty abrupt. Uh, I, I assaulted a friend about a week ago and I didn't even mean it. See, that's how I get in trouble is I just be myself and I, I <laughs> insult people and um, people don't realize. And I don't realize that's the thing is I don't realize. So she had sent me a text and she said, can I call you? And I put no, cause I was in the middle of something. Well, I waited two or three days, you know, went out of my head and Two or three days later, I noticed she never called me back or whatever. I thought I probably should call her because I'm not a caller. I'll text you. I'll send you an email. I don't call. I'm just not a caller. I just don't call. And um, I had to put a reminder on my phone to call my mother on Saturdays because I, she's complaining. I don't. Well, I felt convicted because my mother's 80 and I haven't been talking to her. And I thought, you know what? Something's going to happen to her eventually. And you're going to wish you took the time to call her. And so mm -hmm. I put it on my phone at nine o'clock on Saturday mornings because she's a very early person to call her because I can't call her at five o'clock at night because she goes to bed at seven and she's an hour ahead of me, you know, but she gets up at 430. So whatever. Oh, but I had to write that down, you know, because it's not, it doesn't come natural to me. And mm -hmm. so um, she, my friend sent me this, I sent her the message yesterday. I just said, Hey, you know, we lost contact with each other. And be the other day, when you asked if you could call, I said no, because I was in the middle of something and it wasn't a good time. I didn't mean we could never talk. I just meant that that moment was not a good time. Now, my girls, my four girls, we always text each other before we call because we're all busy. And we always mm -hmm. say, can you take a call? And we write back, no. And we just know they can't take this right now. They're busy. Right. So that's my family, right? So I said, I didn't mean that I didn't, could never speak with you. I just mean I couldn't right then. So she texts back a big long text and she said, I thought you were blowing me off. And because I couldn't do something with you the other day, you didn't want to have anything to do with me. And I thought, wow, that doesn't, that really paints me in a bad, I, I hope you would think I would be better than that. You know what I mean? And um, she's, I'm having all these, physical problems and you never ask about it and I thought when I told Dean about it I was really bothered about it last night when I told Dean about it about that when she said that he laughed and I said exactly it doesn't occur to me to ask people what is your physical problem because I'm super private if I say I don't feel good unless I go into detail I don't expect people to say what's going on or someone tells mm -hmm. me they have a disability. I don't say, so what's the problem? I just, it's not who I am. Mm -hmm. And so I offended her because I didn't ask her, how did this occur? What kind of disability do you have? It just, it didn't occur to me, you know? And I'm like, uh, oops. <laughs> 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 and so when I tell people I'm not pastoral, 
that's what I mean. It doesn't occur to me to get that involved in somebody's life that I know all the details down to the fact that I have to put a reminder on my cell phone to call my mother. See what I mean? It's just not my, in my makeup. And so I asked, you know, Lord, what, what, what's the deal? Am I defective in some part of who I am? And I don't really believe that that's true. I think it's just different than my makeup. If I was concerned about all of these details, I wouldn't be able to go forward. I would be stuck in where that's why we need all these different gifts. Right. So anyway, that's totally off subject, but yeah. (laughs) Yep. 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 So pray for me, girl. And uh, I'll be praying for you guys. I always do. And uh, I believe the Lord's going to show us. And I I believe I I, I feel re re um, energized again. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? That, okay, I don't know what to do, but I, every time I got to this place before I started Believer's House, he showed up and showed us what to do. So I believe he's going to show us what to do. And I think he's already started that process. Yeah. So. And we may have to, and I may have to, whether, you know, I may make an invitation for you all, but we may have to take some other nights of the week or days, even days too, not necessarily just nights, but I think it's important to do some nights for people that work. We may have to take some other days. I may have to go out into the community in some other ways um, to make those connections. You know, I've always joked, well, I don't bowl and that's all there is to do here in Pensacola (laughs) or Amon Pace is the bowling alley, right? (laughs) You know? So, and I don't do outside. So, you know, I mean, I'm cutting my face off, but I, you know, I can go to the library. I love the library. You know, I thought about joining some groups, you know, the community, uh, the chamber of commerce, some other things to just uh, get, we all, we already belong to the ministerial association, but then again, I'm just interplaying with Christians, you know? So anyway, those are thoughts. The Lord will show us up show us something that we can do. Right. Yeah. All right, girl, I'm going to go and uh, I'll see you on here tomorrow. And I'm going to work on this. Why this is I, I switched around some things. Our dining room table is now back out into the kitchen and I <laughs> moved uh, my video editing computer in here behind me is actually my bookcase. This is a green screen. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> can you see? That's pretty cool. So if you move your green screen and so um. Yeah, some for some reason I this is I got I moved over to my laptop because then I could connect when I was going through my video my my actual editing computer. Um, it um, this is what I had problems with, so I unplugged it all and plugged my camera up. You know what I mean? So I was a couple of minutes late getting started. So it could be it just didn't want to connect because I was connected to I don't know. I will have to work on it and then I'll just record and post it. So anyway. One of the things that happens that's Dean's out in the garage working on something else, another video. He's doing his out in the garage when he's sweating to death. I said, why don't you do it in the house? Well, I like the setup that I have in the garage. So he came in yesterday and I said, you got it done? He goes, yep, I got it done. So he spent hours last night doing some editing and then he listened to it and he said, the sound's horrible. And I said, again, why don't you do it in the house? (laughs) You can't. Can't make them do what they won't want to do, right? You got to do it. Yeah. Let them do them their own way. So anyway. All right, girlfriend. I will see you. I don't know what's today. Wednesday. I will see you on Sunday. Maybe I'll talk to you tomorrow. If you show up tomorrow, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bless you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye.